Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to do a little check-in on my goals from the past quarter and set some new goals for the upcoming quarter. This video is for all of my fellow productivity and planning nerds, and I'm going to be doing this in Notion. If you want to see more about what Notion is, how it works, and how I set up this template that I'm using, I have videos for all of that, but I'll be using my 2023 productivity template. Uh, I'm just going to be using it a little bit differently than before, because a couple weeks ago, um, Notion's filters just kind of stopped working. It's actually probably been over a month at this point. I contacted support. I have not gotten a response, um, probably because I'm not, I'm on a free plan, so they don't care <laughs> about my problems as much. But until it's fixed, I'm just going to use the template a little bit differently. Basically, filters that use subpages are not showing things they should be showing. So I'm not going to use my weekly view my weekly template pages uh, i'm just going to be using the top level page and this should work i use a planning system that is based roughly on the 12 week year i've kind of molded it to my own process a little bit but the core is the same i set pretty lofty goals for the entire quarter rather than uh, setting them for a year and then i break them down into specific measurable steps that i can do each week so I'm going to recap the goals I set for last quarter and the, the progress, the results, um, including income that I've made from side projects. So that's, I always like to watch like little income reports. So I thought that would be fun. And then I will talk through my next quarter goals uh, for July through September. Also, I recorded these steps in the opposite order. I did my retrospective second. So as you see things in the Notion, um, they may not match up totally uh, with the order you're seeing them in. So just a little warning there, but what I'm talking about should be reflected on screen. So I've got my last quarter, all of my goals here. These were all broken down into weekly tasks. And the first three I have here are all non-work goals. So first is animation practice, which was a fun thing that I wanted to do. Uh, and then the other two are yard maintenance and house cleaning. So these are all things that I did not track time for. They obviously didn't have any income, but I did have them as goals that I wanted to accomplish. So I have them here. Uh, I didn't make a ton of time for animation practice because I was also doing the 100 day project, which I'll talk about. And that was really my priority for time I had to do art. It was spent doing the 100 day project drawings. Uh, and then for yard maintenance and house cleaning, um, I'm going to talk about this more, but I'm not going to keep these sorts of daily routine tasks in Notion just because I found that they, they kind of got lost in the shuffle while also obscuring the work. So it was kind of like the worst of both worlds having like habit type stuff in here. So I'm going to change it so I only have things that are directly related to a project that I'm working on. But all three of those were fine. The next goal was sticker shop growth. And I did okay on this. The hours tracked on sticker shop stuff are not exactly accurate because I did a lot of drawing for the 100 day project that I later used for sticker designs. So that time isn't tracked here. It's tracked on the 100 day project one. But I did make a few sales. Um, but as you can see, um, you know, as I was looking through the, the numbers, the analytics and things like that. Uh, my profit for the sticker shop was $13 over three months. Not fantastic. Um, this does not cover site hosting costs. It certainly doesn't have any extra to pay sort of for my, for my time designing and formatting and all of that stuff. Um, I may make a whole video about like problems, <laughs> problems I'm having, uh, if that is interesting to people about things that have gone wrong running my sticker shop, uh, which is also a t-shirt shop. I guess I should just call it an art shop at this point, even though I don't sell prints. But that's all beside the point. Uh, in general, I did the things that I wanted to do for this goal. So that part is, is great. Uh, I just think uh, if I want to see a sort of profitable business here, I'm going to need to make a lot of changes going forward which I, I didn't exactly plan for. I need to do a little bit more brainstorming on this. The next goal is my 100 day project. This was a goal all of its own. 
It did not result in any direct income, but it did contribute to the sticker shop designs, like I mentioned. Uh, I feel really good about this one. I did all 100 days. I feel really good about the changes I've seen in my art process and my art skill. Um, so this one, I would say, was a smashing success. Twitch was my big earner for this quarter, and it was all thanks to the subathon that I've talked about before. Um, I'm also going to be uploading some edited VODs of the subathon. I'm just editing it for length, really, because um, it was probably like 40 or 50 hours altogether. I, I want to say thanks to the lovely and supportive people who came by during the subathon. With all of those additional long streams, I ended up working uh, almost 163 hours on Twitch stuff over the past 12 weeks. And I did not even include subathon prep in this amount just because I forgot to track it. So um, big, big earner there relative to everything else I'm working on. Of course, it, you know, it's not going to pay my bills, but we're getting there. We're moving in the right direction and I feel really good about it. Uh, I feel good about the growth I've been seeing, and it's also just a lot of fun. I have another couple like personal routine goals, uh, fitness goals, nutrition, skincare. All of these uh, I found difficult to track in Notion because they weren't really tasks that I was paying attention to. It was more like, I need to do these every day, I'm writing them down in my journal and that's where I'm tracking them. So all of this stuff is going to be handled elsewhere. Uh, in the future because I just didn't really check in with them in Notion that often. Next I had a task for day job focus work. Uh, because my day job obviously pays my bills, it supports my family and my broken crumbling house, um, I want to make sure I'm doing a good job there, that I'm growing as a software developer, and you know basically just securing my position as a professional software engineer. Um, you may know if you've, if you've seen any of my vlogs or, or come to any of my streams, um, my work has had several layoffs in the past few years. Um, I have not been laid off in any of them, obviously, but it's, it's been pretty rocky and really in any moment, especially in the tech industry, I could lose my job and need to find a new one. So keeping my skills sharp, keeping my sort of organizational skills sharp. Um, is is valuable for that. So what I wanted to do was focus on like a deep work session of one hour four times a week for my job. And I didn't mean to track hours for this one because it's not, my hours for this are not connected to income, so it's not really valuable to track them here. But I did track six hours apparently by mistake, so I need to remove those to keep the analytics sort of clean. Um, but this went pretty good. I missed a couple of hours some weeks, but I feel like I did a lot of good work this quarter. Next up uh, is, a, is a goal I don't think I talked too much about. I had been working on a prototype for a new game project with my partner Tyler at the start of Q2. He did have another project of his come up uh, sort of in the middle of Q2, um, so we had started off kind of strong, doing a lot of design work, prototyping some things out. And then it, it sort of collapsed um, and, and we need to really coordinate better, decide what we want to do if we want to pick this project back up, if we want to focus on other things like we've currently been doing. So this one's probably not going into quarter three uh, until we have a chance to talk that through and get on the same page. But I did do some work for this at the start of the quarter, so that's why it's still here. Next, I have my two Project Caribou goals. I had split it out into the functional release and the content release. If you've been following my dev vlogs, you'll know I did get the functional release done. And by release, I really mean version. So nothing has been released. It's not that exciting. Um, but as I was working through adding content, working through some of the, the finishing touches here, I realized I needed to rework a couple of the features specifically the team building of the game as an auto battler and the progression, the sort of overall long-term changes in the game as you play it. So I mentioned all this in my auto battler video, which just went out at the time of this recording uh, just a couple days ago. So I'll be doing that in Q3. 
But um, I did spend a, a combined uh, 40 or 50 hours on game work in Q2. And even though this amount is lower than I would have liked, I was doing a lot of other stuff, you know, the 100 day project, the subathon, uh, general YouTube things. Um, so with all of that in mind, I feel pretty good about this. And the game is still slowly getting closer to being done. Next is YouTube growth. I have found in the past seven months or so that if I post at least once a week, the discovery algorithms are much kinder to me than when I was posting every two to four weeks. I've also had a couple videos pick up a little bit, uh, nothing viral or anything, but the TLDR is that I'm seeing a lot of really promising growth here on YouTube. I'm still not monetized, so all of this work is unpaid, essentially, with, with the potential for being paid in the future um, as people watch, you know, older videos after I hopefully become monetized. But even though I've spent a lot of time on YouTube over the past several years, I think, I think we're gonna get there. I think it'll be worth it in the end. And, uh, you know, I like doing it, so there's that too. Finally, I added in this goal to track Skillshare income. The last time I actively worked on a Skillshare course was uh, about a year ago when I made my 3D modeling course. In the time since then, Skillshare has slowly and methodically removed all of my classes from their platform. The last one came down at the end of May um, because they, you know, they say it doesn't have enough engagement to meet their minimums. So this is the last quarter I'll see Skillshare income because I'm not going to continue making content for their platform um, if it's just going to get taken down in a year. So I do want to say thank you to the approximately 600 people who took my classes over the years and found them useful. I wish I could have left them up there um, for people to use and enjoy, but Skillshare did not want that. So now that they're no longer required to be exclusive, um, I'm probably not going to republish the Django courses. That's not really what I do anymore. I don't do much Python or web development work, so I don't feel like I want to keep maintaining those. But I may reformat the 3D modeling course to republish here on YouTube, since now that they've taken it down, it no longer needs to be exclusive to Skillshare. So I might do that. It depends on how much work is going to be involved in re-editing because it was designed for Skillshare. So if, if that is too much work, it probably would just be better to make a new course from scratch. So I'll, I'll probably do something like that here in the next few months, but I don't have anything solid on the plan yet. Um, but Skillshare did offer some income. And at this point, after, you know, getting all these courses made, uh, it was entirely passive just as people were finding and taking my courses. So thank you for all of that. Um, it's sad to see it go, uh, but I didn't have much of a choice in the matter. And that's all of them. Um, so even though I abandoned a few of my goals halfway through the quarter, I still got about 70% of my tasks done for Q2, which is almost where I like to be. It's a little low. I like to be around 80, 85%, but it's pretty good. And it's also very encouraging to see that even though I'm going to be losing Skillshare income completely, um, my other projects that I've been giving more attention to are gaining traction to balance things out. You know, Twitch and to a much lesser degree, my sticker shop, um, you know, we're, we're sort of gaining a foothold in these. So it's really nice to look back on all the time I spent, all the things I did, and all the things I earned out of that. And none of this even goes into, you know, community building, engagement on social media or anything like that. So this is just a, a little sliver of, you know, an overview of how things went. Next, we're going to set up for Q3. To start off, I'm creating a new page of the time frame page using my template here for the quarter. I wanted something like an autumn leaf for the like an autumn theme for the page, but as I'm looking back now, maybe it's a bit early for autumn. Maybe I'm being a little bit optimistic that we're not going to have a deadly summer like we have the past few years. But um, for Q3, I filled in a brief note at the top. I really want to focus on my game this quarter, which should come as no surprise to anybody. 
I'm getting a little better at focusing in on things, but I do still have things like YouTube and Twitch that need a certain amount of effort and time just to sort of maintain and keep doing what I'm doing with those platforms. So I can't really focus completely on my game, but I, I want to make it a higher priority. After getting the quarter page done, I start filling in my goals using the template for super task goal, which is what I called it. Uh, starting with a goal to rework the gameplay in the ways that I described in my auto battler video. Um, rework the gameplay sounds like a huge thing. It's actually more specific than that, but I didn't want to make the title of this too long. And for all of my goals, because of the notion filters not working, instead of breaking down week by week into like daily tasks, I'm just going to put the subtask directly into this quarterly time frame and they're going to be a lot more general. So some of them are going to be for the entire week. Some of them are going to be just like a check in once a week with all the progress. But for all of these goals, I fill in the description with any relevant info. This is where I explain what I want to accomplish for this goal. If there is sort of like an end an end state or if I want to do a certain thing a number of times each week. Um, I want to make sure I'm capturing that here so I know, um, you know, in a week or two, I'm going to forget what I was thinking when I made these and it's, it's nice to have that reminder. And then for the weekly things, uh, I'm going to use my batch create automation. I actually, for the first one, I created a task and duplicated it. I'm not sure why. I guess I just forgot that I made this automation button. But for all the other ones, I do go in and use the batch create button that I made, and it goes a lot quicker. For my weekly breakdown of game tasks, I decided I wanted to do two good development sessions each week. This is a little less rigid than my previous requirement of five hours of dev work each week, and I think it will help me focus on just sitting down and getting started and doing the work rather than meeting a time quota. I think. What I really need is to, to allot time to do the work and actually get into it. I have a lot of resistance around starting on game work. You know, in my head, it's gonna, it's gonna be a whole thing. Um, but I think if I can just get into it, it'll be a lot better. Like, cause it's not unpleasant work once I start doing it. It's just the thought of doing it. So I'm hoping that this phrasing and this framing of the goal will help me get into it. I also wrote down in my brainstorming doc that I didn't show here that I want to post weekly on Instagram and potentially Discord to stay accountable for my game dev work, but instead of including that here as a separate task, I'm going to have a, a social media posting goal, so that's going to include that. Next I added my Twitch streaming goal, which is nothing crazy. I did my big subathon in June, so from here we're just going to keep up the schedule of three days a week of streaming. There are also a bunch of games coming out in September that I'm very excited about, so I need to keep that in mind um, because Q3 does cover September. I may want to just mark out on my calendar that I, I might want to bump up my streaming schedule then, um, just to experience all these new games uh, with, my, with my people, you know? Next, I added the task I just mentioned, the social media posting task. Um, I have plans to post on my art Instagram twice a week, post about my game development progress once a week, and then also to post in Lainey Taylor's Discord for her Create Along uh, project, which goes all year. You just post once a week of a creative thing that you did, and it's really, really helped me be accountable. I know I've talked about it before. It's part of her Patreon benefits to be part of the Discord, and I've enjoyed it a lot, and I just want to make sure I'm still doing it. So I, I want to have all of these different things in one task each week so that I can remember to do them, check them off, and then be good to go. Next, my YouTube channel goal. As I mentioned in the retrospective part of this video, posting weekly has been a, a significant amount of work, but it has helped my channel grow. Uh, at least that's what I think is helping. <laughs> it's really hard to know. Uh, but my focus for this quarter is my game, so I just want to maintain this level of effort on YouTube, and whenever possible try to blend the two by making dev vlogs or game dev videos, 
uh, tutorials of things I'm actually working on uh, whenever it makes sense to see if I can if I can you know two birds with one stone some of this the next goal is not uh, related to a specific outcome, but I want to make sure I'm practicing my art. I guess it kind of ties into the sticker shop because in theory I'll be able to use my art time and my improved skills to make designs for my shop. Uh, but I don't have any outputs outlined for this, uh, just practicing art each week. And I want to do 20 sessions of figure drawing practice. So this is a pretty flexible definition. And I want to do that 20 times throughout the entire quarter. So I made one big task for that, and then weekly tasks for the art practice. Now, a surprise goal. <laughs> this one took me by surprise too. Um, I want to participate in Camp NaNoWriMo, which is a, a mini version of NaNoWriMo in November. And instead of writing a novel in a month, you get to set your goal to whatever you want. Um, so I want to do a pretty minor project. I just want to work on 250 words each day of a game design, game story sort of documents. 250 words is a roughly a short paragraph. Um, I figured this would be doable without taking away too much energy from other things. Um, but I just have, I have a lot of ideas and it's really distracting. So I'm hoping by doing this project, writing things down, working through some of the design things that come up in my brain, I'll be able to work them out, you know, get rid of that extra creative energy so I can actually do my work I'm supposed to do. That's the theory anyway. Okay, next goal. We're almost done. I've had this one in the past and I'm going to try and bring it back yet again. I want to practice music composition once a week. But um, because I'm doing the Camp Nano project, I'm only going to start this after that's done, so in August. Uh, I've spent some time learning about music theory and working with LMMS to learn how to make music, but I have not been consistent and I would really love to get good enough to compose a few tracks for my game. So that's the goal. And then finally, I wasn't sure if I would add all the game dev goals in now or just do the first one and add the rest later as I see how things shake out, but I did decide to just schedule everything and I can move it around if I need to. So I added a goal for figuring out the overall game progression and the lore and implementing that into the game. This is the second big piece that I identified that needed some work, uh, aside from the team building stuff that I mentioned. And that's everything. I do have some fitness and health goals, but like I mentioned, I decided to track those in like a habit tracker in my journal somewhere else that I think makes more sense. And with this setup in Notion, I'll use the same like day-to-day, week-to-week planning routine as I did before. At the beginning of a week, I'll go through, make sure everything looks right, that the week looks balanced. I'll make a note of things I want to do that week and create a loose schedule. Then each day, I'll write down specific tasks in my bullet journal on paper, because this is what makes it real for me. This helps me work through all my daily tasks by writing them down. At the end of the week, I'll make sure the progress for each task is updated in Notion, take a measure of how I did, and then quantify that progress, which is part of the 12-week year system, and then I'll start the week. It's somewhat monotonous, but that's really what I want for a planning system. It should not take a lot of time to manage. Um, you should just be able to use it, and I think I'm finally getting there. But that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to, you can get my Notion template from my Kofi shop. Or if you want to build it yourself, I have a whole video walkthrough of how I built it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos about games, development, and creativity. Because I will be back soon with another video every week according to my plan. And I hope to see you there. Okay, bye bye.